Hello there, doing something a little bit different um, for this channel. Um, gonna have a go at covering some more serious stuff every now and then. Um, mostly because like Jimquisition is my current affairs show. I do that on The Escapist, escapistmagazine.com. Uh, but it's a weekly show. It's, it's up every Monday and every now and then I'll do emergency episodes to cover stuff. But sometimes stuff happens where it's like there's just too much happening at once and... And, you know, I don't want to split the, the audience and everything. So I thought I'll use this place as a nice little repository for things that I do want to talk about and maybe can't be bothered to edit um, as an actual full-on Jimquisition video. But anyway, I wanted to add my two cents outside of Twitter, where I, I'm always sticking my own people's business, um, with the whole YouTube ad revenue sharey thing. Um, my, um, my good friend... And Pia, Total Biscuit, has done an excellent video, um, which is sure to get a, you know, million views and whatnot, and you should check it out. Uh, he has uh, more experience professionally in the YouTube arena than I do, has more at stake there. Um, as a preface, YouTube for me is uh, pure recreational. Um, I do, you know, I'm, I'm on the same network as, as uh, TB, actually, um, but... The, the money I make from this goes almost exclusively on Aliens toys. Uh, in fact, I, I, with my last lot, bought up the Aliens Colonial Marines Play Arts Kai toy, which I'll be doing um, probably a little video look at that, uh, that, that and the other one. There. Anyway, anyway, I'm getting off the point. The point is, when we finally get to it, is Phil Fish, the uh, wacky developer who everybody loves, except uh, mostly everybody, uh, came out of the woodwork to have a go at YouTubers. Now, I didn't get to see all of his tweets in detail because... Stupid computer making noises. I didn't get to see all of his tweets in detail because he uh, stepped away from them uh, after he made them. His, he protected his account and just wrote never mind and... Uh, I can't tell if he's actually deleted his entire Twitter profile or not now, but either way, uh, Phil Fish is the developer of Fez. Um, those tweets I did see were him basically saying, you owe him money if you put Fez on YouTube, and compared it to the movie industry, and was like, oh, well, you, you, you get in trouble if you put a whole movie up on, the, on YouTube, or, 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 you know, publicly display it and try and make money off it. Um, and very sarcastically was like, oh yeah, it makes sense when you do it for uh, a game like Fez. And uh, went so far as to accuse YouTubers of stealing uh, his content. And this has sparked up a debate. Whether or not Phil Fish was trying to be funny or not, I don't know. Uh, I have generally defended Phil in the past. I think he is uh, often unfairly maligned. Um, but I did feel he was, uh, if he's not joking, he was being very unfair. Uh, and even if he was joking, his tone was such that it just, it, I mean, it obviously it came off poorly. Uh, calling YouTubers thieves is its pretty gross, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, you know, I don't find that cool at all. But anyway, there's been a lot of talk going around, you know, ever since we found out that uh, PewDiePie earns $4 million a year. And you know what? Fair play to him. Uh, I, I'm not a, a watcher of his show of his videos, uh, but, you know, whether I care for it or not, he's he's found an audience, he was in the right place at the right time, he earns $4 million a year, entertaining millions of people, and we should all be so lucky. Uh, the guy lived the dream, hit the big time, I envy him, absolutely. I think anybody who does video game coverage for a living who claims they don't envy him is a liar, an inveterate liar. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to be bitter about it like some people were. Anyway, back to the business. The discussion, whether Phil was joking or not, the discussion is, has happened and is happening. So let, there's nothing we can do about that now. The uh, topic of do Let's Players deserve to make money doing what they do? Do game developers, game publishers deserve a cut of the money they make? Uh, how do we stand ethically, morally, legally? It is a complex issue. Uh, more complex than my sarcastic tweets on uh, Twitter. Well, that's where tweets come from, obviously. Um, can do justice to. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So this is all unedited and unscripted and, and everything. Um, so the topic, you know, these are there are many different topics in the one topic. And of course, because most of this discussion is happening on social media, it's not really getting um, a huge uh, shake. Uh, but there are many videos and articles and stuff coming out. Um, uh, some people on Phil Fish's side, actually my, my good friend and colleague and, and uh, podcast co-host of many years, Conrad Zimmerman, is firmly on um, Phil Fish's side of the debate, if not Phil Fish's side, you know. Uh, he is uh, very much in favour of, of revenue sharing between Let's Players and whatnot, and, and doesn't feel it's right that if you take someone else's content uh, without seeking permission and uh, without arranging things beforehand, that's not cool. And, you know, Conrad makes logical points. There are logical points to be had here. Um, but it is a complex issue, and it is a, a dangerous territory to walk. Um, I have always been in favour of more open distribution of content. Uh, before we begin, um, I will say any discussion on the legal side of things is based on, uh, on laws that I don't inherently feel are right. Um, some people do bring up the legal side of things as their argument, but you might as well be bringing up uh, you know, how Quidditch works in Harry Potter for all the relevance it has to me in the issue. Obviously it is relevant in terms of, you know, you can and can't do that black and white stark, this is the situation. Don't get me wrong, as, an, as much of an idealist as I am, I'm a realist as well, I understand that the situation is thus, that copyright law says this and, and that and, you know, when it comes down to brass tacks, game publishers have the rights to their games and can enforce them. And I do agree with Conrad when he said if this ever goes to court, the Let's Players will probably lose. However, that does not make the argument right from, uh, from an ethical or a moral or any other standpoint. Copyright law is like, I mean, when was the last time that was updated? The 80s, late 80s? Um, whenever it was, was come up, whenever it was contrived, it was a very different world back then. Uh, this was pre-internet, this was pre-let's play, this was pre the, the idea of on, like, like the masses having their entertainment back and, and work being transformative and, and f fair use and, and other forms of copyright being a thing. And it needs updating. The whole thing needs updating. I mean, the whole system of people with rights to intellectual property is a hot mess. Uh, you know, we live in a world where patent trolls can just come up with a vague idea and then sue the pants off anyone who actually gets off their ass and makes something. Um, copyright law as well, you know, people claim it's to protect artists, it's to, uh, to protect developers of games, creators of music, uh, makers of television programs, writers of books, uh, but the people who benefit from it the most are the rights holders, not the people who made the stuff that the rights pertain to. Um, you know, record labels, game publishers, movie studios, book publishers, you know. Um, the argument that copyright law protects the artists, I mean, that's not been true for a very long time, except in the case of, granted, independent developers like Phil Fish, who, who obviously have a bit more control, um, well, a lot more control over their stuff. Um, but again, that just goes to show you that, that copyright law needs to be more mutable than it is. It can't be, it can't be like the Bible, you know, um, where everyone's taking their moral and scientific advice from a 2,000 year old book, uh, which, you know, has its own set of issues. Uh, but, you know, something that was contrived before the internet, trying to deal with internet as a thing. I mean, we, we're seeing that with the whole net neutrality thing. Uh, you know, people uh, using old-fashioned ideas to try and define what the internet is rather than sort of going back to the drawing board and, and saying we have this new thing, let's come up with some new ways of dealing with it. Um, so that's a little bit of preamble there. Uh, back onto the main issue. Uh, like I said, it's multifaceted. There are many different types of video content. There are many different types of any content. Uh, you know, you've got your Let's Play, they come in two different flavours of a basic variety. You've got your commentaryless walkthrough, which is, you know, the video equivalent to like a game FAQ's uh, fully detailed written walkthrough. And you've got your, uh, 
your commentated Let's Plays, stuff that, uh, you know, PewDiePie does, and, uh, you know, all the other famous ones, Markiplier, Total Biscuit, of course, um, myself on a much smaller scale, uh, and even then you have different types of Let's Plays. Someone like PewDiePie does it as, as I think it's fair to say, pure entertainment. Um, you know, he pure entertainment slash advertising. I mean, when PewDiePie loves a game, that three million views base that see that he loves it and people who idolise him. When Total Biscuit, I mean, well, we'll move on to someone like Total Biscuit, and then again, to a lesser extent myself, that's more critical stuff. Uh, it's still the same basic premise, but like, you know, you see with Squirty Play and especially the early access Squirt videos I do, it's critical. I do those to criticise the game as I play. It's my first impressions of it and it's designed to showcase what's hitting steam at the moment. Uh, in the case of early access Squirt, it's like, this is the, the opening of the game, here are my thoughts of it, and then, you know, I'll give you the pricing and, and it's there to help you look at these games before you just buy them. And that's criticism, and the problem I have, the biggest problem I have, I have many, but the biggest issue I have here is the definitions. You know, it's very easy to just sit back and say, well, Let's Plays deserve um, to make no money, or, or have to share a huge amount of their money with publishers. But where do we draw the line there? Uh, where, do we, where do we define uh, criticism, which should be protected and should have nothing to do business-wise? with the companies being criticised, um, at least when it comes to the act of criticism itself. And, you know, a, a Let's Play that's done just for entertainment and, and is quote-unquote, you know, leeching off of the other content. Um, my issue here is it's very... We could all come up with our own definitions, uh, but we won't be the ones defining. Uh, the ones defining will be your Nintendos, your uh, EAs, your Ubisofts, your the publishers, and uh, you know working with Google and uh, whatnot. And that is not not no. It's not no. I do not want. Do not like it. No, thank you. No, thanks, sir. Um, once we start trying to draw the lines in something that is incredibly blurry, it is dangerous. It is reckless. I do no. Uh, Especially because we should... I see a lot of this. I've seen old school, traditional games journalists, old guard games media, somewhat reveling in the trouble that YouTubers have had. And they sit back confidently and say, well, you know, they wouldn't have their content without those games. Um, they rely on, on other people to have their content. And I'm like, that's a bit hypocritical. Uh, I come from, I guess, I guess we could say I come from old games media, um, which is weird to say, it just shows you how fast the internet moves, I mean I've only been covering games like for six years, but I come from old games media traditionally, um, which even then had its issues because I started in blogs and stuff, not games journalism, which had its own schism, and then old, old guard games journalists angry at bloggers and saying, well they're not real, they're not legit, and we're seeing it again with both quote unquote journalists and bloggers now grouped together saying, oh fuck PewDiePie makes four million a year, YouTubers aren't a real thing. Um, but the point is, is how hypocritical is that? Uh, as someone who has, you know, I do a lot more video content now, but as someone who still does written reviews of games, as someone who used to do news of games, upload trailers, d disseminate screenshots, none of us can do what we're doing without the games industry. None of us can do what we're doing without taking assets from the game industry with implied consent. Uh, we are in a situation where, you know, a lot of guys who are having their content flagged, guys like Angry Joe, um, are doing reviews. Yeah, it's a video review, but it's no different from like a written review I'd do for The Escapist. Um, he's criticising the stuff, he's using assets to show the game, so am I when I put a screenshot in a thing. So are people when they rewrite their press releases and use official screenshots. None of us can do what we're doing without "quote unquote" leeching off of the you know the, the game industry. And I think it is uh, short-sighted and a bit shitty of any games journalist who is looking at YouTubers as something lesser. We're all in this together, as far as I'm concerned, um, as critics, as pundits, as as entertainers, as content makers, whatever you are, whatever, whatever 
little realm of games media, of the massive games media uh, space you uh, inhabit, we're all more or less doing the same thing. And we, we should all be pulling in the same direction. Um, and that's that's uh, one one big issue I have is is the 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 murky water, the blurred lines, the the ease with which a company could uh, could look at a let's play and say this is uh, our content, give it back, and do the same thing for a review. Don't believe me? Do do contact Angry Joe and ask uh, exactly how much of his livelihood has been fucked thanks to companies looking at his reviews and claiming them as their own. And that is is hugely disgusting to me, as someone who does Let's Plays to be more critical. Um, you know, I am a, I am a game critic. Uh, sharing my money, any of my money, with Nintendo or Ubisoft or one of these companies is disturbing to me. I find that disturbing. Um, you know, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 no, we should not be, a critic should not be a business partner to a publisher. Uh, we should not be getting in bed together. That is, is seedy. It's, it's, it's sleazy and it could happen. And... You know, it, it's very easy for, for someone to come up with this bold statement of what what should be uh, shared with a publisher and what shouldn't be. Oh, well, reviews shouldn't be, but Let's Play should be. It's not that simple. Some Let's Plays are criticism. Some of them are reviews. Uh, some of them aren't. Uh, you know, and some games writing is pure entertainment. Some games writing is, is you know, uses nothing but assets. I mean... You know, the next time, say, Polygon or Kotaku or whatever do a, a, a post all about GIFs, you know, when they sh sh throw up a load, of, a load of Luigi Death Stare GIFs and call in an article, uh, should they be giving all their money to Nintendo or not? It is it is the same thing. Uh, we have the other issue, of course, of um, whether or not Let's Plays reduce sales, which... I, well... I can tell you right now, they don't, or rather they shouldn't. Uh, in the case of a good game, uh, developers like Mike Bithell have come out, and Mike Bithell has a single player, story based game in Thomas Was Alone. He likes Let's Plays. He loves Let's Plays. Do you know why? Because they made him mad bank. He be stacking that cheddar, son, because of. Guys like Total Biscuit out there, guys like PewDiePie out there, guys like Angry Joe out there. Um, I don't know who actually played Thomas Was Alone, but I know that some did. And every time someone did, Mike Biffle made money. Uh, in, if a good game is showcased by an influential Let's Player, um, people will buy it. Uh, if a bad game is showcased, people won't. Um, not even PewDiePie can sell a bad game. Um, Walden and the Werewolf... Uh, was 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 played by PewDiePie, and uh, as far as I can tell, I looked at the Steam stats, ain't doing too great. So, you know, all the coverage I gave Earth Year 2066 and uh, Air Control mm, didn't turn into sales. Uh, so really, you should only be worried about Let's Plays if your game is bad, and you don't want people to see how bad it is. And again, that comes down to uh, the 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 regulation of Let's Plays being uh, a lot more to do with censorship than actually getting what's yours. Uh, because if you are a, a, a maker of a good game and you are given a good showing on YouTube, you got yours. You just got a whole bunch of sales you weren't going to get before. And arguing otherwise is the old piracy fallacy, where people say an illegal download of a game equals a lost sale, which is horse shit. Uh, I'm seeing this coming up on uh, on YouTube as well. You know, people are saying, oh, well, people just uh, watch the, the videos and get the story and then don't bother playing the game and buying the game. If they're looking at YouTube because they don't want to buy games, they ain't going to buy a fucking games to begin with. You can only win that argument from a position of spite. Uh, and if you want to have an attitude of, well, if you're not going to buy my game, fuck you, don't watch it. I mean, I at least understand that from a personal standpoint. 
Um, but arguing it from the lost sales standpoint is simply fallacious. Uh, it's not right. So that is uh, another issue. Um, I said on Twitter, and it was somewhat flippant, but I do believe in it. If you believe that a YouTube Let's Play of your game is an exact replica of the experience, did you make a good game? Did you? Uh, as Looking at something like Fez, I mean, okay, I could watch Fez from beginning to end on YouTube. It will be nowhere near as fun as playing it. And I say this I, I, as a fan of Fez, I loved Fez. Much rather play it than um, watch it. Uh, and people who do watch these games, you know, a lot of them are kids. My stepson watches Let's Plays. He's a PewDiePie fan, like most sort of um, boys his age are. He ain't buying games. We regulate that shit. You know, we we ain't buying him games every single day. Um, you know, he might... He, he, he has access to a lot more games than some kids might, but he doesn't have a, his own massive disposable income. So he lives vicariously through Let's Play and can get exposed to the culture of games, can get exposed to, um, to the medium uh, of games and the language of video games um, where he might not have been able to before. Fuck, I mean, I was a very poor kid growing up. I missed out on a lot of experiences. If I had YouTube when I was a child, yeah, I'd have probably watched a lot of games. A lot of games that I would never have bought otherwise, never have been able to buy, because I was a poor, broke-ass kid, you know? And I think that's where a lot of these people that are just watching games to spoil the ending on YouTube or whatever are doing. Um, otherwise, you know, you've got walkthroughs that are there to help people who've already bought the game and are trying to find some a way through past a thing. I mean, a, a fucking YouTube walkthrough has helped me with a game I have owned, you know? So, it, it's just, it's such a, a black and white sim oversimplification to act like a lost sale is, a, as a, is equal to a YouTube view. It's not. Um, on the whole, honestly, I think Let's Plays are, uh, are great. I think they're good for the industry. Uh, but this goes back to, uh, you know, stuff like uh, used games. Uh, which proved to have a positive impact on the industry if you embrace it and if you work with it. Uh, or piracy, which many other developers feel uh, has a positive effect on the industry if you embrace it, if you work with it, if you look at pirates as potential customers rather than lost sales um, in future. Um, and before that, the movie industry was against VHS. <laughs> you know, you look back... You always find the same logical fallacies, the same false arguments, time and time and time again, every time a new method of entertainment comes up, a new medium, a new way of digesting content, a new way of enjoying creativity. Uh, the same arguments are happening now, you know, a, a, a YouTube view equals a lost sale. Three million people watch this YouTube video. God, we've lost three million sales. It's the same as saying, you know, a million people pirated this game. That's a million people that would have bought it. No, you have no proof they would have bought it. Uh, if they're out there illegally downloading, they're probably not game-buying people. Uh, maybe one day, you know, they might love the pirated version of Assassin's Creed and then rush out and buy two, you know? Potential. You s don't, don't look at these things as problems. Look at them as potential. You know what? Many people are doing it. Mike Bithell, Devolver Digital, uh, Deep Silver, you know, Fuck yeah, they want Saints Row on YouTube. That's awesome, you know? Show people how just ridiculous, bizarre, wacky that game is. And people think, I want to fucking get that. Uh, if they're the, the sort that are watching YouTube videos to buy stuff. If they're watching YouTube videos to avoid buying stuff, well, they're trying to avoid buying stuff. So, good luck trying to get their business to begin with. And uh, that's, that's really my thought. My thought overall is that uh, Let's Plays are good for the industry. It would be in the game industry's interest not to fuck with that. Uh, and, uh, yeah. It, it, it is good advertising. That argument comes up a lot, but it comes up a lot because it's true. Um, guys like Total Biscuit, have, they have the stats that tell you that, that, that their videos generate sales. Uh, the only other argument to be made is, is, well, if they want ad revenue from a popular YouTube video, 
then the YouTube video maker deserves sales revenue from the sales their YouTube video generated, which becomes a whole incestuous back and forth, um, basically a snowball of profit. And really, wouldn't it just be easier to let each have their own, to just let games benefit? Or, or not benefit if they made shite, or if they're David Cage, and you really would just be served watching someone else play it. Um, you know, would it not be better to just let them, let the game industry enjoy the sales generated by Let's Plays, and Let's Plays enjoy the ad revenue generated by their own um, uploads? Uh, it just seems to me a simpler, nicer, fairer, and it is fair, I don't care what you say, it is fair, uh, system. Thank you. I think that, 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 that'll do. Uh, so, Let's Plays. And again, I, I reiterate, I say this is someone with not real vested interest. If if I lost my channel tomorrow, I'd be annoyed. Um, but I make most of my money from Jimquisition, which, um, not to kickstart the argument again, itself uses a lot of trailer footage and can't exist without the game industry. Uh, but it's highly critical of the game industry, and it, wouldn't it be a mess if Nintendo started saying it wanted money for the, every Jimquisition I upload? Uh, thank you, thank God for me, and uh, I'll see you later.